Well, in some instances, you can only dream about, and that was one of the facets of that team, is you were very rarely outpitched by anybody. So that had to give you uh, a great sense of security. What was the bullpen like at that team? Uh, no, both of me answer the question. <laughs> We scored 800 runs, so most of the time, most of the time, don't touch it, don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> so, that team scored 800 runs, which the point of that is that we usually had 700 more. And we go to the night, we like 7-4, 8-5. And we win 7-6, 8-7. We had really good starting pitching. Now you're trying to figure out what he did. 7-6, 8-5, what did you do? Wrote the line and got out of the way. <laughs> So uh, we had great starting pitching. The point I want to make, without forgetting to walk out of here, that I would call everybody back. That, co that team had great coaches. And the greatest co pitching coach and the greatest hitting coach in the history of the game. And then it had, I think, one of the greatest bench coaches in Eddie Brinkman, who had great personality and And a great first base coach in Davey Nelson, who really was an outstanding man. Had Jim Leland at third base that was a phenomenal. He was almost as good a third base coach as he was a manager. And then we had Art Kushner in the bullpen. So whatever a coaching staff can do for a team, the players don't want to win the game, but that coaching staff was so special because it kept everything moving in the right direction and somebody needed a tweak, that coaching staff tweaked it. What did I do? Don't, who should I pitch? Charlie, who should I hit? And I just stood there. <laughs> well, um, if you can, we line up some of the people who want to ask some questions. Just line up by Beth over there. She's got the. Uh, she has the microphone, and you guys have the questions. And so. Uh, can I say something else? Sure. All right, how good were we? All right. Oh. When you start having the middle of your lineup be so deep that you know. A lot of clubs look for a third, maybe a fourth hitter. Starting, we had we moved Budge to two, and he went nuts. We had Budge, and then Fisk, and you had Cole, and you had Kitty, and you had Pachori. I'm missing one guy. Huh? Fisk, Baines, Bull, Kittle, Rio up front, and Dibzinski. Dibzinski. <laughs> And then back then you had like Fletcher and, and, uh, and Julio Cruz or Bernard. So that was really a great lineup. And they caught the ball and really had a good starting pitching. So really our bullpen was the only thing that was was not uh, great at the time, but it were good enough. Let's go to questions. Well, you sort of answered it already, but... Uh, well, then sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 no. The, the team greeting took off when Chris was inserted in. There's one 29 batting average in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired uh, the move to the fifth to two spot? I heard it, Steve. <laughs> 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 something different. So because we had so many guys in the middle, put him, put him in a two spot to just get him going. And, uh, he went so great we just left him alone because he's a really good base runner. He can handle the bat and he had power. Uh, so in fact, for my entire career, probably Carlton Fisk set up something that I, I used the rest of my 20, whatever, 30 years and as a, a number two hitter that had a thumb and all started with a touch. Um, this is directed to Tony. I know him well, and I want to know why. Do you think Ozzy Gia will ever manage the big leagues again? Yeah. yeah, you think I was slow to answer those other fellow questions. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, think of, you know, Ozzy's a, a funny guy. He, you know, he's our rookie of the year in 85. 
he really is a brilliant baseball guy. And uh, he was an outstanding coach when the Marlins won the World Series. And he won a World Series there as a manager. But sometimes he just, you know, he gets in the way. And uh, I'm always believing that you can learn. And the basis of it, he's a very smart baseball man. And he can fix anything that's not right. But right now, he's, he's got to... He's got to get his, his brain back where, where he's, you know, you're just a man. You're not, you're not the show. The show is the guys that play. Now, when somebody trusts him, I think somebody might.